This is Tampa Home Talk and welcome into this amazing Friday morning. It's starting to get super hot outside and uh, that'll tie right on into our guest for the hour. I'm going to introduce him really quick, Mr. Darwin Encarnacion. Very good. Did, did I get it right? You did. You did well. excellent. excellent. Um, he is with Dynamic Heating and Cooling. Of course, joined with one of my counterparts today, Mr. Leo Kane. Woot, woot, woot. Leo Kane, barrel engineering and inspection in the house with perfectly laid out statistics. We're getting the tape here because they <laughs> keep moving and it's driving Leo crazy. All right. So we're going to, um, as always, um, the feedback we're getting from our listeners is you guys really like to get the stats and the information every Friday morning. So we are going to run through this. I don't think we fixed the Facebook Live thing, so we're going to go ahead and go live on my phone, which will be fun because everything's backwards when we do that. Or I guess I could try to flip it around. So, all right. So what do you think, Leo, about these stats and these numbers? Like, what do you think? I'm confused it's like we have 1800 pending listings that like the amount of pendings keeps going up and up and up so we've gone from two weeks ago if you look at the pending listings we have about 1600 and now we're closer to 1850 so pendings keeps going up and up so are they having trouble closing these deals i look at these numbers every day yeah and i think you're gonna see yeah. at least 95 percent of those close well, of course but it's just taking a long time no it's not. We've seen some fall through from people that have got that were either furloughed during this or lost their job. There was some of that, but there's still people qualified. And what we're seeing is like I, I talked to a lady yesterday. She's a nurse. The husband is he works for a local BMW dealer and he was part of the Internet sales department, got laid off or furloughed or actually closed the whole department is how it went. And so one of them is still employed. And so they're going to qualify based on her income. Mm -hmm. And I guess, I guess what's still confusing me though, is sold are on the sold are rising. Uh, new listings are rising, but pendings, pendings are rising faster because pendings, you got to look back a week and see new yeah. listings a week ago or two weeks ago. The pending number is just huge. So I'll tell you what I see is going on right now in the market. Just in this week alone, I probably should keep count so that we can, talk about it on the air, but just myself and our team, we got about 25 to 30 new buyers just this week that are relocating from New York, DC, Alabama, Ohio, mm -hmm. every day. That, that orange, a safe distance, high five virtual. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, we're seeing them move here in record numbers. Look, have you noticed the balloons, Leo? Oh, yeah, the balloons. The, the white ones represent buyers. Like I thought you told me last week that, so, so she has balloons on the wall behind Mimi, who's our radio tech. Mm -hmm. um, the red balloons and the white balloons all have prizes in them, and you get to pop a balloon when you... Set an appointment with a client, consultation, yep. Yeah. And so last week we had talked about it where the better prizes were in the red balloons, but... Sellers. People are going crazy on the white balloons. Again, active listings for the week, 1,132. Pendings for the week, 1,836. Yeah, I mean, our new listings are on the rise. I like to see that. Our price, de price decreases are decreasing. Our off the markets are decreasing. It looks like we're coming into our normal summer month cycle. Yeah, I mean, look at that. I need to pull the number really for last year. That's what I should do. Yeah, it'd be interesting, but I think I, we're up over last year. I don't remember numbers this strong last year, 1,100. We weren't tracking them as closely as we are now. I know you, yeah, we, you guys do it at a distance, but we're like literally looking at these every day, But I'm Rain Man when it comes to numbers. I'm like, yeah. I, I've got photographic memory on numbers. Uh, just don't ask me to get a shopping list together. I'll forget half of it. But <laughs> numbers, on the other hand, I'm, I'm all over. And I'm, I'm loving to see these over 1,100 new listings. This is awesome. Um, this means that our... Real estate economy is still going strong. Yeah. I think, um, you know, we need the number of new listings really to rise because if you remember, we were have been at a two-month absorption rate forever. And looking at 1,800 pending sales compared to 1,100 new listings, that we're number is going to drop. Yeah. I mean, we're still, we're still behind. If we're, closing, if, the, if we're closing all these 1,800 
and then we're closing 1800 we're only refreshing with 1100 we're still behind we're running out of uh, supply yeah i mean it's just like it's just like we're back in february so and this this leads me to an interesting point because we look at the numbers right every day i love numbers every week we talk about it on tampon talk we open up with what ha- what's been happening in the last week and we compare that to the week before and i mean you can see everything is on the rise everything is in a moving in a positive yeah. direction. well Canceled are up. But other than canceled, everything's moving in a positive direction. But, I mean, if you take a look at canceled, which are transactions. But these are going to be relisted. Yeah. The, if, here's something interesting. If you look at canceled la- this week, it's 180. If you look at it last week, it's 150. If you look at it three weeks ago, before all these restrictions were lifted, we were almost at 300. So, well, because people didn't know what to expect. Yeah, canceled are half of what they were two weeks ago. So this is a snapshot of May and what's been happening. And um, I, I got this particular buyer, um, and this is not even counted in the relocations, right, that I've been talking about. But this particular buyer has a company over in the Orlando area and, uh, you know, runs a full business there and is looking to buy. So got a divorce in an apartment, was going to buy in that area. It's Orlando is really expensive. If you've never priced it out, like it's expensive for a very average priced home. And, I thought you were going to say for a very average community. <laughs> yeah. Well, either or. Um, in any case, when you compare that to here, you know, and the buyer's looking to spend five to 600000 he's like, well, why shouldn't I just buy a waterfront? I had waterfront <laughs> when I lived in New York, and now I should just I'm probably laughing. buy waterfront. I want to get a boat again. So here's what's happening. And, and you we can't d- even get land at 500000 Wait, wait, wait. The- so we dive pretty deep into those conversations to kind of find out what's going on. So again, that appointment that my girls are booking, when I sit down with them and I talk to them, I try to find out you know, what's going on behind the conversation. Like, why are we even talking about buying a home? Where are you now? Tell me about your lifestyle. What's driving the choice? So we kind of dive into some of those questions. And so, uh, what I found in this particular conversation is, you know, he's in a community, all the amenities are shut down. Everybody's on lockdown during COVID. So you can't use the pool. There's no boat to go out on. And I had heard that boat sales were up. So we probably should bring somebody in, you know, so for a second. Memorial Day weekend. I mean, yeah. boat sales are usually No, but in up. Ge- like for the, since this whole COVID thing, boat sales have been up uh, well, quite it, a bit. Because the easiest way to socially distance yourself is get on a boat and head towards yeah. the oil rig. So th- this particular buyer is like, well, if I had my own pool, I wouldn't have to worry about it being shut down. And if I had my own boat, I could just walk past the pool and get on my boat and go enjoy my day regardless of what's going on. So I think we're going to... Uh, just continue to see more of that. And um, so he, he wanted a cap at 600. So when I started looking in the Madeira Beach area, which is one of the areas he was considering, as well as Apollo Beach, those are very different, very different communities. So he likes the homes, obviously, that it can get better in Apollo Beach compared to the older style built in the 50s, Florida ranch style, you know, Madeira Beach. And so what we found is I actually had to bump his price range into like seven or eight hundreds just to look in Madeira Beach. I I think ultimately is going to end up in Apollo Beach. Yeah, that's more affordable. Yeah, because he wants access to the water, which you can get there. And he wants to be surrounded by 55 and up. No, he wants he <laughs> wants uh, the nicer, newer style type home. So that's that's pretty much what it is. So I'm going to ask, I'm going to answer, read a couple of his questions here on the air. Maybe Ooh. I'll let you do it, Leo, oh, and I, then I'll answer them. And his questions were so in-depth that I, I, we had a hard time connecting on the phone. And I'm like, I'm not just going to type this in an email. For one, it's going to be too long. For two, if you have a personality like mine, I'm going to gloss past the email. So for, for three, I'm just going to... These are all number answers. Yeah. Awesome. I'm going to put a video together to answer all of this guy's questions. So I did. And the interesting thing is he said, I've got an attention span like a, like a squirrel. So he's, he's, he usually said he, he would not stay attentive to anything for more than a minute. My video was about 15 minutes long that I sent him, which is why my voice is always like this Friday morning. But anyway, um, he said, I said, well, did you watch the whole video? And he said, yeah, I did. <laughs> so that tells me I answered his questions in a way that he, he was engaged. S- yeah. Very engaged enough to watch the whole thing. Nice. So why don't you ask the first question? So I'll answer it when we come back after the break. 
Well, how long have you been a full, oh, this, the one that circled? Yeah, so he, he's asking some other questions, like how long have you been a buyer's agent? Yeah. How well do you know the area? And I'm like, our intro yeah. covered that. Well, my answer to that is we're very high 50-50 mix. When I work with buyers, I use a showing assistant, so a lot of times they're the first line that's in there. I do have clients that say, hey, I've narrowed it down to this one. Can you come back and look at it with me? Naturally, I'm going to see things that your inspection will uncover Yep. just because I've been doing it for a long time. I think we should just, I don't even want to ask, ask the question with like 20 seconds left. Ask it and we're going to answer and come back. The Madeira Beach properties seem to be priced a lot higher than Apollo Beach area. Would you like to get your ex perspective on the differences in the market dynamics between them? Yep. So we'll talk about that. That's kind of a general question that people living in the area may be able to answer. But the questions actually get better, don't they, Leah? They do. They do. And I can answer the question about Madeira Beach. All right. We'll be back in just a moment. Stick around. Well, good morning. Welcome back. This is Leo Kane with Barrel Engineering and Inspection. And I believe we have a caller on the air, don't we? We do. I think we have Gary the Mover. Welcome to the show. What you got for us this morning? Hey, good morning. How's I've it going? Got, I've got a regular house on a big piece of property off of Gandhi Boulevard in St. Petersburg, near the 11 acres that's on the water. And I've been holding off selling it, thinking that when that 11 acres goes development, my property will be worth more. Am I correct in that assumption? It could. It's a loaded question. Uh, there's a lot of dynamics that go into that. Um, everything from the propensity to rezone commercial to the buyer that buys your land, what are they going to use it for? There's a whole bunch of layers in that question. Yeah, I, I, would, ag I would agree with the layering of the question. It, it depends. And also, if you have a development going in on those 11 acres, that could be five to 10 years in the future before it's actually completed. So you could see a decrease in the short term because no one wants to live near a construction zone. What we would do is we usually like to start with, you know, where are you now and what's the end goal? Is the end goal to flip this property for a profit? Are you looking to put it into something else? Like, what's the big goal with it? Well, of course, I'd like to get the money out of it, but at the same time, I, I don't want to be that guy that says, gosh, what, you know, look what I could have gotten 10 years from now. So I could sit on this for 10 years. I'm okay with that. And the property itself is big enough. It's about 160 by 120 that zoning wise, maybe three homes could go in there or one big home could go in there. It's right on so Gandhy. That's. It's it's near it's real close to Gandhi. Yes. Oh, I thought you said it was right on Gandhi. Yeah, I mean a good. Not right. No, it's not. It, it's not right on Gandhi. I don't think commercial is the way that would ever go. It's a little bit off of Gandhi and in, in a development. I mean, I kind of like not, the idea. Not, I mean, of a neighborhood. Slowly putting three houses on the properties and selling each house. Maybe put one lot up for sale on one of those. You get to design your own house type things. So. You get the buyer lined up, you get the money for the down payment, you build a house, yeah. then move on to the next lot. That actually is happening on my street right now. One of the things we do, like when someone, and I see things sometimes that you guys won't even see, just because I've been doing this for so long, that I, I look at uh, what appraisers would call the highest and best use of the property, okay? So its current use doesn't necessarily mean that that's the property's highest and best use. And, you know, it's real easy to look at it, Gary, and say, oh, I should, should, should. Like, you can shit all over yourself. And really, you know, it doesn't... Is that a dump button? <laughs> shit all over I yourself? I mean, it's, it's a thing, right? <laughs> like, you can shit on yourself. But the point is, you know, what's your what's your goal right now? Like, is it to put that... Is it being rented now? Is it to put that... You know, if you sold it, what would you do with the money? Those are kind of like the bigger questions that we get into when we have a consultation with you. And from there, based on your answers, you know, we craft a very specific plan around your needs and what you told me is important to you when you're looking to sell it. And, and, thank, like, thank you. I appreciate it. I actually and, like... Uh, and oh, let sorry, Gary. Can I ask a, se a second question? Go ahead. Um, I spoke to somebody about a, a REIT, a real, real estate investment trust, selling it to that, and then I, I wouldn't have that uh, tax liability of, you know, having to reinvest that money. Uh, is, is that something that's done a lot with, uh, with residential properties? Is, it's an investment property now? Uh, right now, I am renting it out. 
So, I mean, the only way to avoid, are you talking about capital gain taxes? Correct. The only way to avoid capital gain taxes is to sell it through a 1031. It doesn't matter whether you sell it to a REIT or not. you got to sell it through a 1031 to avoid those taxes. A 1031. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's basically selling right. your property to buy other property. Correct. Yeah. So you can, um, let me do this. I'm going to have Pat get your off air number or your number off the air so that um, we can have a little bit more in depth conversation and I can answer your questions more specific to, you know, what you're trying to do. And I can answer all those questions, you know, based on your, like, again, your long term needs and goals and that sort of stuff. Sound fair? Well, I, I appreciate it. Thank you. Great. Thanks for calling and uh, thanks for the question. We really appreciate it. I enjoy, always your, right on time. I enjoy your show immensely. I've learned so much. Thank you. Month. Thank you. And if you ever have a question, um, definitely just pop it on into the off air number. And uh, we try to give that out regularly. And my uh, complaints are we don't give it out enough. So it's 813-377-2775. 813-377-2775. So again, it, random calls or texts are okay. And um, I'll, I'll st stick around and talk to Pat, George, Gary, and we will uh, get your information and I'll call you back after the show. Thank you so much. You're welcome. So let's go back to our other question that we had really quick, and I'm going to answer this because it does get into layers, and then we need to get to our guests. So. Yeah, so back to the question before the break. Those, that was, I'm really glad Gary called in. I like that question. It was good. That yeah. was a nice question. And it, there's layers in there. I can there tell is layers. By talking to him, there's a lot more things we need to chat about for me to give him advice that I can't answer in the very finite time we have. Yeah, but I think ultimately it comes down to what do you need the money for and what do you want to do with it? Yeah, and that that's the ultimate. I mean, if you can just sit on it for ten years because you don't really need the money or you don't really know what you're going to do with the money, that. Well, I mean, here's the thing. Sometimes people have their own ideas on what they think they want to do or they think is a good plan, but it's the questions that we ask when we guide them through the process that ultimately helps them discover, you know, what could be a better solution. And it's things you're not thinking about, but again, it's just talking them through that so that they come up with the idea on what's best for them. So my question that I wanted to ask you earlier was Madeira Beach is definitely priced higher than Apollo Beach. Um, what's the difference in market dynamics driving that? They're totally different, as, as anybody that lives in the area would know. Um, you know, Madeira Beach is, is more of a seasoned area, right? It's been around since the, the 40s, 50s. I mean, people have been building homes and having a second Florida home there for years. So, of course, uh, the architectural style alone that you're going to get in that area compared to Apollo Beach are going to be completely different. Second thing is the surrounding area. You're going to have a lot more stuff to do and just, you know, population. It's, it's a lot more densely populated than Apollo Beach, I think, is still more rural, really, than. Yeah, I mean, you're next to Gibsonton. You're, you're down there. You're, you're outskirts of Hillsborough County versus Madeira Beach slash Treasure Island. I know people usually mention the two together. We're actually members of the Madeira Beach uh, slash Treasure Island Chamber of Commerce. So Yeah. So there's a lot more. Um, you know, vacation and tourist traffic in that area. Apollo Beach is much more of a, you know, bedroom community where people live there. Uh, a lot less like Airbnb, that sort of stuff. And so, of course, the homes that you're going to find there are going to be the older Florida style ranch homes built in the 50s. A lot and, of them. And I think another difference is if you look at Madeira Beach, that's a typical beach community where you have an ocean and you have houses feeding into an ocean. If you look at Apollo Golf. Beach... <laughs> That is a feeder area. So what I mean by that is Apollo Beach is like Cape Coral. There's a whole roadway system of canals basically yeah. built in. And I don't think Madeira Beach has that. So I think no. for, from an urban planning standpoint, Apollo Beach is probably more boater friendly because more, more people will have property that can have water that feeds into the ocean. Well, that's the big draw there, right? Like a newer, nicer home that has access to a deeper water canal so that you can go out. And so anybody that has a boat knows there's all sorts of things to explore out in the Gulf. Like once you get in a boat, there's just so much stuff to see and do and, and wander around. And so just even what's around I think is completely different. So it's really just kind of explaining the dynamics. And I think the best way to do that is really to tour the area and just know that 
Madeira Beach has been a lot around a lot longer, settled a lot more, so the houses are going to be older. It's also going to be a lot more of an established type community. More to do, more to um, eat, more to see. The other thing that's a really important consideration is uh, deed restrictions. So, I mean, if you're looking at Apollo Beach, more than likely Mirror Bay will be one of those communities that you'll consider, and uh, you're going to have some pretty massive deed restrictions there, yeah. as opposed to Madeira Beach, where you're just not going to have that. That is true. I mean, you, you, you pay those HOA fees to have those gated communities in these subdivisions. That That is very true. You would get that with Madeira. Would you get that with Apollo Beach, not Madeira Beach? Um, building into that, with the recent economic collapse, should I hold off on looking until sellers have had the chance to digest the new market realities of home pricing? Uh, it seems everyone's still using comps from pre-crisis era. So what's your first thought and opinion? And uh, I kind of laugh, right, when I look at that because we follow these numbers so closely. I kind of felt stupid for asking that question too. That, no, that was a question. It I know, your I, question. I, I felt stupid for saying that right after we did the market recap yeah. and talking about the rebound. But you got to understand, not everyone's listening to the show, so they don't know the reality of the numbers. These are facts that we're yeah, delivering. Yeah, definitely. And so, you know, this is what some of the buyers are thinking. Yeah, I mean, it's just, I, I thought we were going to see... A harder hit than we actually did with the market in the real estate. I mean, I, I, I love the new perspective of a lot more companies are shifting towards work at home. And these people are like, I could live anywhere. And that's actually helping with the it's actually helping with the increase in demand for here in Tampa. Yeah. One of the questions we get a lot too, and this was one of his, is what are your fees? And, you know, as a buyer's agent, we get paid by the seller and their agent for basically getting you all the way to the finish line. So we're one of the few people in, in uh, really industries that work 100% on contingency with no retainer that we will find you an acceptable home, get through inspections, contingencies, financing, whatever else has to go into your deal. Um, and there's a lot of details, more than people realize. So, all right, this is Tampa Home Talk. Stick around. We've got two more questions when we come back. Welcome back to Tampa Home Talk. This is Adam Talley with Talley Insurance. Happy to finally be here and beat the traffic. And get it was it was crazy getting in here. It got nuts like overnight I've, or what? Well, I've never come from Brandon before. I'm usually coming from downtown, so I'm going 275. What did you sleep at the office? Uh, I had to get in early to get some stuff done. Um, this is early. Being here is early. I was there at six o'clock this morning knocking stuff out. <laughs> So then I did, you know, that long on ramp uh, at Lando Lakes? Yeah. If you're heading 75. I was, when I texted you guys, I was on the on ramp already. I was like, oh, it'll take me five minutes. I'll be a little late. The no traffic was that stacked yes. right there? Traffic coming is, here? Yes. Tra traffic is bad. I, I saw it, like, I was on seven, I was on 275 coming north, and I'm like, this might take me a full half hour as opposed to 20 minutes. It will. All right, so we're like running out of time quickly. We've got a couple other, they're real, the last two questions I think are really amazing and yeah. we're gonna have to table those for the nine o'clock hour, unfortunately, because we have to get time for you to do your insurance tip. We've got to really get to our guest. We've got a lot of things we want to cover with him, so go. Oh, insurance tip? Yep. Oh, while we're, while we're talking about traffic, now is a great time to look at your auto insurance, especially if you have children that are going to get their licenses over <sighs> the summer. I am seeing rates go up, and if you have kids, the 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 premiums are ridiculous. So now's the time to shop and make sure that you're You just hit me below the knee, Adam. I have teenagers I insure. I know. And make sure your kids are getting those 3.0 GPAs because it does make a big difference oh, yeah. on the premium. So. Yeah. As a matter of fact, we uh, were pushing to get my older daughter's uh, good student discount in there because she's 19 and she's like out of school and they didn't want to give it to her, but then they ended up giving it to her. So it was pretty good. Online classes. Get Just get some A's. Get it going. Yeah. It's worth it. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. It could be worth the discount. Absolutely. That's a really good tip of the week. And you can never have too much education. So. Yes. So Darwin, we've yeah. occupied so much of our hour with real estate stuff. Did we entertain you? You, you did. It was very entertaining, very informing. It was awesome. So, um, real quick before I forget, Gary Pat was trying to pick you back up and he could not. So yeah. either call the studio back 
and connect with Pat to give him your info and he'll pass it on to me. Or you can just text your info to 813-377-2775 or you can call Mimi. We'll pick you up. 813-377-2775. Again, that's our off-air number. 813-377-2775. So Darwin, yes, this is the time where uh, have you started to see like a spike of people calling you because stuff's not working? Because it's I told you right when you were here, I'm like, how ironic that we have an AC guy in the house because I know one of my units in the office is on the fritz. And last night, for whatever reason, it was 80 degrees in my house. Yeah. Well, I, I will tell you this. It's, it's been uh, – the COVID has really kept the uh, residential and just – we've been slammed just because everybody's working from home. And all of a sudden, 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 they're realizing, hey, my AC isn't working that good in the middle of the afternoon because normally they've been in their office or whatever. So, you just, yeah, Florida, it's relentless with the heat, and, and it's just been particularly with the last four, six weeks with this, everybody working from home and staying home. It's been, we, we've been busy. So Now, yeah. do you, is, is it take you a while usually to, like, get to somebody in those really busy, crazy months? Um, we try to get everybody, you know, with that day. You know, we we have like five or six technicians that are out there running calls, and we usually run till nine o'clock at night. So if not that day, we definitely would get you the, the next day. You know, so I, no. I have a, I have a question for you because mm -hmm. you were talking about okay, now they're home mm -hmm. and it's the afternoon and the the house isn't getting uh, cool enough. Um, I've seen like an uptick in homes that have two AC units. So at what square footage are you saying, hey, maybe you need a separate one? I mean, I know for my parents, my mom likes it super cold. So right. if they just had one for the master and then one for everything else, she'd be really happy. But what do you see mostly? Yeah, That's usually, a good question. Yeah, that, yeah usually uh, 2500 is the limit for one unit. Uh, a lot of builders, particularly depending on if it's like a track home type situation, they'll try to do a zoning system. Where the idea is, you know, you're not using all the zones at once, so you can get away with a five-ton unit doing more square footage. So it's like an, it's, but it's it's not not a good idea. It's just cost saving. So if you're doing track homes, a thousand homes, and you're saving five thousand bucks, that's a lot of money. But as a the homeowner, say, if you yeah. got to replace it, and let's mm -hmm. say you're three thousand square feet, right. does it make sense to split it up into two? It, absolutely, it definitely does. Like putting a master suite on one like a smaller unit and then the rest of the house on the other unit it definitely makes sense well i know so. for like us like uh -huh. literally like my daughter moved out so the back bedroom's empty right. my son's in the next room over and he's 17 so like once we kick him out next year <laughs> we're gonna have one whole side of the house that's right. not really lived in exactly yeah so that that also accomplishes that or a zoning system too is one way to do is that, that an ordeal to go in and install after the fact no i mean it's definitely harder you know if it's a single story home it's not that big of a deal once you get into problems this was a two-story home because then you got stuff between the floors and uh, but if it's a single story home, normally Florida has plenty of room in the attic space to do what you have to do. But definitely it's more expensive. So, so what are some things that your AC needs that you see people often neglect? Um, the the filters. main yeah, yeah, the, just yeah the filters. <laughs> yeah, the main the exact the main thing is the filters and particularly the outside units, the newer systems, the new refrigerant, the uh, head pressure is a lot higher. So it's critical to keep that clean because it, it extends the life. But basically, as far as a homeowner is concerned, the main thing is just changing the filters and keeping that outside condenser clean and leave, you know, set it and forget it. You know, that's the number one yeah, thing that you know, we don't play with just it don't the touch yeah. it out there. Right? The number one thing we recommend for our people that are mm -hmm. leasing out properties. Mm -hmm. And so hear this and you have an AC guy actually telling you the same thing. We recommend that either the owner or the property manager go have the AC, go have the filters changed every month. Usually the first of the month, you can mm -hmm. pick up the rent check, change the AC to make sure you prolong that system. And the third thing you can do is actually check on the property condition, make sure they don't have a Rottweiler or a German Shepherd in there they're not supposed to have, right. which would not impact anything from an insurance <laughs> perspective, right, Adam? A little, a little bit, a little bit. Now, we, we, have a, we do have a carrier that will allow you to have all those type of things <laughs> so long as you get a separate animal liability policy through their company. They have like a standalone policy. So if you have that. What are those run? Like is the policy more expensive? hundred bucks. Huh? Like they're not that bad. A year? Yeah. yeah. For your, you know, Rottweiler or whatever. So. Do they check the behavior of the dog or no? <laughs> oh, they uh, should. You know, <laughs> you know, I think once the, once they dog bites somebody that pretty much you know. yeah <laughs> but by then it's too late <laughs> it is i mean i think there's 
It depends on the situation. I'm sure if you read that contract, there'd be aren't, ways to aren't get huskies out of it. on the aggressive breed list? It depends on the list. They're okay. not on all of them. Because yeah. I have a husky, and I'm like, that dog's the biggest wimp. The husky <laughs> are fine. It's like the wolf hybrids that the chows care about. Chows, chows yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyways, back to ACs. <laughs> well, it's funny. Not- as an AC guy, we know what dogs are not. You know, yeah. yeah. Chows should be on the list. Chows are on the list. They are right. Yeah. I'm seeing Great Danes getting taken off the list. Yeah. Um, Horse dogs should be. Mm-hmm. They're the Just gentlest the size. It's you know, I mean, if they it's like putting a them. golden retriever on the list. Come on. No, it, it takes two golden retrievers to equal the size of a great dane well the great dane it's like if it they're sweet dogs but if they get really excited and want to go you know yeah. play with a three-year-old they might knock it down and bust its head open or something because it's just so big <laughs> yeah. but anyways acs yeah. sorry no but getting back to what katrina said about you know uh landlords dropping off filters and stuff or they actually need to put them in no 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 that's they, what i meant yeah they need i wasn't you don't, saying drop them off no, right no. So yeah like up, upside oh, down you sideways yeah the tenants, the tenants <laughs> don't do it even no. if it's in their lease that's yeah. why we say go do it do it right that's hilarious. you'll see them piled up in the air handler closet mm-hmm. six brand new filters and well here they are the ones that you dropped off they haven't been putting them in so yeah you need to physically do it for them well how so. long in your opinion like does that actually let's use that scenario right uh-huh. where it's a tenant so mm-hmm. they've been it's been a whole year and the ac filter has not been changed that's not out of the realm of possibility no, right not at all so how how much impact does that have on the system in terms of life and maintenance and it, everything it's huge it's huge um it, it, usually they'll end up calling because the unit will freeze up you know but if there's no filter at all you will, uh, it, it'll just, it'll cost you a lot of money. It'll shorten the life. It's just, it's just bad news. It's, it's just like driving your car and putting a blanket in front of the radiator. You're going to overheat your engine. It, it just, you know, it's just one of those things. Working it's it too the, hard. It's the biggest thing. Yeah. So, so how often should the system actually be maintained or cleaned? We, you're, you're, if you ever if were bored enough and you couldn't sleep, you know, read your manufacturer's warranty and it actually says, that you should do it once a year to maintain the manufacturer's warranty. Um, so what here, goes into that? Like, uh, you know, it, funny you say that because I was thinking I hear these like you know commercials all the time. Twenty nine ninety nine for you know, uh, and it says you know service check. You know that's the key. So they check it and then they tell you, hey, it's five hundred bucks. So twenty nine ninety nine. You know what I mean? Right. So, to show yeah, up, right? To, right. Drive yeah, out there. Yeah, yeah. Right. They're called SIDs. You know, salesmen's in disguise. That's what they're gonna send to your house, <laughs> I right? Like that. I've never yeah. heard that term. Before. Yeah. I'm so I mean, that. yeah, it's like you know, twenty. It's like really because you know, you know. So what's reasonable? Like, what's a reasonable uh, expectation in terms of price and what they're doing, other than checking it? Well, I will tell you this: we we charge um, eighty nine bucks for a preventative maintenance. Preventative maintenance means that. We're assuming you've done maintenance before, right? And we're just doing stuff to prevent you from having a breakdown, right? So that's normally, you know, clean the outside coils, clean the inside coils, clean your drain line, check, quit like an hour and a half, right? But if we get there and you haven't had maintenance in five years, well, then all of a sudden that's what we call system rejuvenation. It's going to take more time, maybe involve taking your blower wheel out, actually, fit, you know, putting more of a chemical on your... So it, it depends. But just preventative maintenance... Is eighty nine bucks, and you should, you know, we recommend twice a year in Florida, but you know, once a year is what the manufacturer says to keep your warranty intact. So it's like going to yeah. the dentist. You don't right. just like not brush yeah. your teeth and then go to the dentist every every two every, right. every six and, months. Yeah. You need to keep brushing that, your that's teeth. Poor the, dental hygienist. Yeah. Can you just clean my teeth? Yeah, just you know, do yeah. it. Do the stuff. Yeah, but but the twenty nine ninety five or the forty four ninety five. I mean, it just cracks me up because you know because people say why are you, you know why are you ninety dollars? You know we can. I see. I said. Uh, yeah, yeah, go ahead and call them, and if they leave your house with less than four hundred bucks, I'll, I'll I'll give you two hundred. You know, so <laughs> they're gonna deal. they're gonna sell you something. Bet, take it. Yeah, you know they're they're gonna they're they're gonna try to sell you something. So, so what's the difference between like an air handler and a, a condenser? You guys get that a lot, right? We do get that a lot. You know, you know, like new home, uh, we'll have people that are younger or that move from up north and always live in an apartment or something, first time down here. And they're like, where, you know, what's the air handler? And they never knew where it was or what it is. Never changed the filter. You know, a year later, we're there. But so the air handler is the part that's inside your home. Um, usually it's in a closet or in the attic or in the garage space. And then the condenser is the part that's outside your home. So, you know, it, so it just that's a question that we get or we find that just people don't know, you know. I so, have a question. I can tell. Uh, I have, <laughs> I have a question. Look on his yeah, face. well, you know, the, the wheels start turning. Yeah. Uh, so my wife and I were driving around the other day, and I saw a, this probably tells you where we were yeah. driving, but I saw a lot of homes that still that had the AC systems in those, like, metal cages 
still. Yeah. Uh, do you see that a lot still, or is that just more of a we don't want it growing legs and walking away type of thing? Yeah, back, what was it, 2015, 14, when the copper was through the roof? That you know? was, was around the time the housing market was collapsing. 2010 and 11. Yeah, yeah, was that when it went? Well, yeah, because the houses were empty and people were stealing them and then mm -hmm. salvaging them for copper. Right, yeah. copper was like almost three bucks a pound and people, you know, so it, it's, it depends on the area, of course, but that type of thing is pretty, and now they changed it where you had to be an air, air conditioning business to take the copper in to get money. Thank um, God, because I would yeah. see people literally yeah. rip stuff sure. out of the walls and do so mm -hmm. much damage for probably 20 bucks worth of materials. Right, right. It's crazy. Yeah, they, All right, Tampon Talk, our off air number 813-377-2775, 813-377-2775. We'll be back in a minute. Well, good morning. Welcome back. Leo Kane here with Barrel Engineering and Inspection. We're chatting it up on this hot, hot day with a cool, cool guy. Okay, that was good. That was good. All right. <laughs> you can be the funny one and the smart one. I'm not allowed to be the I'll funny be the, one. I'll be the late one. I'm not You're allowed to be the on funny this one. This morning you missed it. Uh, yeah, the listeners prefer it when I'm just the smart one and not the funny one. Oh, no, that's not true. We haven't taken a poll. We have no idea. No, she's getting listener feedback. We can do that. There we go. <laughs> All right, so another question for you. You guys get a lot, Darwin, mm -hmm. are what's the difference between straight cool and heat pumps? And are heat pumps actually worth the extra money? Well, yeah. Uh, I thought everything had a heat pump. I didn't know. Well, yeah, Hillsborough County is kind of like the borderline Sarasota South. You'll rarely see a heat pump because it just doesn't get cold enough, long enough to justify. Normally, a heat pump will cost you an extra 1000 to 1500 bucks over a straight cool. So what is a heat pump? Yeah, what do they do? What's the us, difference? Us uninitiated. That, that's folk. great. Awesome. Yeah, good I have question. no idea. I just think it's all in there. <laughs> all right. So uh, a, tr a straight cool system is uses solely electric heat to make your heat. Oh. Okay. So it costs Which more is money. Expensive. Right. So you can see the meter spinning when you turn it on. Right. More. Right. So, but a heat pump uses the compressor, it reverses the direction of refrigerant. So your outside unit acts like your inside unit. You're out. You know, if you go outside in the summer, it's blowing out hot. Well, then your air handler will blow out hot because the gas is going to a different direction. But anyway, so depending on, so that's the difference. But, and a heat pump does have a backup electric heater in it because heat pumps don't work well below when you need it when it's below 40 degrees. So you end up using your electric heat anyway. So I don't even turn the heater on in my house. Well, like that, ever. well that's most people just do it like those four or five days a year where you can knock the chill off in the morning. Yeah. So that's why, you know, depending on how you use it, if you, when you're changing it out, if you want to save the money to go to a straight cool. It's a thousand dollar difference. Yeah, like a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars difference. Is good so that's good to know. Yeah, that's a lot of money. I mean, it'll take you a while to, you know, for, so that's why we get people. The only thing you got to be careful of is that the air handlers, they'll run a smaller wire gauge to it because it has a smaller heat and a heat pump. Mm -hmm. So you might have to upgrade the wire size, you know, which would take away some of your savings. How so much? Like, when is it not worth it? it well, like, well, I, I guess if it's more than a thousand bucks, right? For sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? So then it's but not I'm worth saying, it. Like, what's, but, the t what's the cost like? Is it five, six hundred bucks and now you're only saving four? You, we, usually, we contract with electricians because we can't do that. It's not within our, our scope. Um, but yeah, it's usually somewhere between three to seven hundred bucks for them to it's come and do that. It's going to cost you five hundred bucks to get the electrician out that, there. That's what I mean. Yeah, for the electrician part right should have been an electrician yeah 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 right so like listen they're not cheap but, but do you want to take their risk it's not a hobby like you ever gotten <laughs> oh no I'm, I'm not taking the risk yeah. i could barely build a birdhouse if i had to I'm a, let me tell you I my husband is so i don't do it at all but my husband's so petrified of electricity like <laughs> he would turn the electric off to the city if he could yeah. just to do anything in the house yeah i'm i'm like uh, capable enough to change like an outlet cover Basically, not like do anything on the inside, but I can change the I can change the cover. The I'm okay. Yeah, piece. I can do. I'm okay with that. But that's still but a little you, too close. You haven't taken your home and taken some of the switches and turned them into dimmers. No, no. It's like a standard home ownership. I thing. don't see Adam doing that. <laughs> no, that's not my. If, if, if when my father-in-law comes to town, he's a civil engineer. He can do that. Oh, for there me. you go. Yeah. I still remember the time I had a house party one time, and the next day a couple of my guests showed up and installed dimmer switches on some of my lights. What? It's like for future parties, you need to dim these lights. You're freaking. You know you're a nerd when your friends change out your switches in your house. I don't know if my friends care enough to 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 do that, or would. They're, they're probably like me. They'd have to call somebody, too, so they wouldn't know. To do I was that. very appreciative. I'm That's like, pretty funny, really. They just showed up, and then they're like, are oh, you here to help clean? They're like, no, we're here to change your light switches. I'm like, okay. <laughs> okay. They're like, it was like daylight that. in here, and we didn't like it. 
They must have been electrical engineers, right? Um, Probably. Yeah. Probably. <laughs> I'm not complaining. Yeah. <laughs> So the uh, the air purification systems. Yes. You know, do these help with like odors or bacteria or mold? And it would be, it would be good to know. Like, is it the same as the UV? Or are they different? Yeah, they, that's a good, and yes to all those questions. Okay, so Depe- break it down. Yeah, depending. <laughs> yeah, depending which one you get. Um, the one that we do is you know is we do the air night, um, which is it's it's a combination. It, it kills you know bacteria mold and viruses in the air and also on surfaces um they use it um commercially it's it basically it's a uv light and there's like some a metal plate that it reacts and makes um o- uh, oxidizers you know and 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 it works really well so it's a combination it does odors bacteria a lot of times they'll sell like this the uv stick that goes in your air handler and that only kills whatever the light comes in contact with because so it's just so the a UV light. the purification system better? It, it, yeah, it's actually active. It, 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 you know, it actually moves in the air. And, it, and if you type in air night with a K, night, and YouTube, there's a video that explains exactly how it works. Um, we are, you know, selling a lot of those right now with the COVID. Because people, we, we send them to the video. It shows them how it works. It kills stuff on surfaces in the air. So, so it's really the good. So COVID? Like, have they proven well, that? Or they it, think it, it did, might? Or th- what? They did it with the SARS and the MRSA. Okay. And bird flu. This is new, obviously. So I'm I'm assuming they're going to be doing testing. So we can't say that. They don't it, know yet. Right. It's probably it too early COVID. to tell. Right. If it does or not. But it um, it's definitely a good idea to have. So you know? if you have pets, is that the best thing to have yeah. for your house? Yeah, because it, yeah, it does. And the other thing it does is it, it ionizes the particles, you know, of dust and dander in your house. So they stick together. Right. So it makes it fall to either fall to the ground out of your breathing space or make it heavier or bigger so your air filter picks it up so it doesn't put it back in the air. So, yeah, there's a, there's there's definitely a lot of benefits to I it. I know. You've got yeah. a comment on the dynamics and yeah. how that works. Yeah. 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 Really, Leo? No, really. Tell me, Leo. What's your dynamics? Which, you know, I'm dynamic heating and cooling, so I'm interested to hear. What? <laughs> He's like the, uh, who's the Bill Nye the science guy? Like, mm-hmm. yeah, that's Leo. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm just taking pictures. So I yeah, can you can, yeah, you can. You can keep He's it. got you got a cheat sheet over there. Yeah. Don't you? yeah. Well, this this looks like a flux capacitor from right. uh, uh, Back to the Future. So yeah, they actually use that this similar technology like on the on the space stations and stuff like that. That's how they they purify the air. So hmm. yeah, it actually it actually does work because I mean I noticed. Like when my, my daughter, particularly when she was young, had bad allergies, and when I installed it, I noticed a difference with her in the morning. You know, even um, mold growth, like if you have Okay, I have horrible allergies, I'm just saying. Yeah. You hear mm-hmm. my voice, and mm-hmm. mold is at the top of the list. Not that I have mold in the house, but right. I'm allergic to everything outside. Yeah, so. yeah. It, it, what it does, because it, it ionizes the particles and makes them stick together, positive and negative, right? It drops it out. Of, you, you'll actually notice the first month you have this, you'll be dusting more in your house. In dust yeah, more? because it's bring you know how when the light filters through it, you see the dust floating in the yeah. air. Yeah. So it drops it out of your airspace. A it <sighs> makes it heavier. So it's not floating around. You can actually clean it up. Right. Yeah. And then also your filter picks it up because it makes them ion it ionizes them when they're negative and so positive. Your, so your filter is worse. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It it's looks what, worse. You got it right. Which, well, it's doing what it's supposed to do. So how much are these? The, uh, we sell them for six eighty seven installed. Do they go you into know? your existing unit? Yeah. Yeah. They go on the supply side, and you know they they actually give yeah. They're, I'm, I'm, that's the only one that we sell. We don't do the UV lamps because that's just the. All right, gimmick. Darwin. Yeah. You're coming <laughs> over, and I know right. people are going to want to connect with you. So yeah. if you want to hook up with Darwin and get information on this air night, yeah. Eight one three. 377-2775. Mm-hmm. Uh, just text AIR to yeah. 813-377-2775, and we'll know you're looking for Darwin. Yeah. Again, 813-377-2775. Uh, Gary, we haven't forgot about you. We'll connect with you at the end of next hour. Stick around. We'll be back for hour number two.